Hello guys, I'm Karen and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rush. So this is the third time this book has come up into one of my videos, so it's about time that I review it, right? This book is the first in a series and I can't wait for Ice Like Fire to come out later this year. I just think the world is great, so we'll see how that goes. So let's talk about this book, shall we? 16 years ago, the Kingdom of Spring invaded and conquered the Kingdom of Winter. Everybody was either killed or made a slave. However, eight Winterians escaped and have been living as nomads ever since. And one of those eight survivors is our main character, Mira. She's an orphan girl and she just wants to prove her worth to the survivors and prove her worth to Winter, mostly because she doesn't have any memories of Winter herself, only whatever she's been told by the other survivors. I really enjoyed the story. I thought the world was wonderful. The world building was so good. And I also really liked the magic system. So I gave this book four out of five stars. Now this is where the non-spoily part stops. So if you haven't read this book, just Go away, stop, go read it, and then come back. But this is where the spoilers begin. Spoiler time. We'll start with Mira. She's an orphan girl. I really like her. She's very plucky and courageous. But I think she can be a bit stupid sometimes as well. She just goes off into one of the spring cities and retrieves the locket on her own. She came so close to capture at the beginning of the book. And I was just a bit like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just... Stop! Be safe, please! I thought the relationship between her and the other survivors was so interesting because they've seen her grown up and she really wants to prove herself for Winter and I really liked the whole storyline of her then becoming a full-blown member of the court. I wasn't a great fan of Mira's relationship with Mather though. The unrequited love thing just didn't quite work for me. I don't really know why. I usually quite like a slow burn and a yearning kind of love, but in this case it just didn't do it for me. Especially because it felt as if they both had feelings for each other, but they were like, he's gonna be king, so you're not good enough for him. And I'm like, girl, please. Like, you're outcasts, survivors of a, big, of a big invasion. Surely it'll be okay. As the story progressed, I wasn't a big fan of Mather's character as a whole as well. He just, he just seemed a bit flighty. Now, of course, when you get to the big reveal at the end, it makes sense that he's just following Sir's orders, but it just, it just made me quite angry. He just pawned her off as a suitable bride for the future king of Cordell. Whereas she actually is the Queen of Winter, so that just seemed a bit of a weird situation for me. It just didn't make that much sense. I was just like, why would you just sell off your queen in marriage if she's your queen? That, however, does bring me to Theron. And I really like Theron. I mean, he's supposed to be all hot and handsome and all that kind of stuff, which is quite fun. But I just liked him as a character. I really liked how Theron and Mira kind of found each other in like being stuck in their lives and wanting more out of life than just what's being prescribed for them. That made the romance really sweet and I really liked that. My favorite bit of this book, however, was the world building and the magic. I loved having the four season kingdoms and the four rhythm kingdoms. I loved the whole explanation about how magic came to be, how magic ceased to be, the eight royal conduits. That was really cool. I especially loved seeing the magic at work during the big battle scene. How people would like move in a certain way because their king demanded it, like aided by magic. That was just such a cool idea. I really liked that. Especially also because it didn't just mean that they would be guided by the king, but they still have their own free will. Because I don't like it when magic just kind of takes over somebody's will and you can't really do anything else. The big twist at the end of Mira actually being the Queen of Winter was just a bit like... The moment that Hannah started talking to Mira, I was like, she's so her daughter, isn't she? I first thought she was gonna be like a younger sibling to Mather and that, that was why everybody's like, you can't be together. But then just having it be the switcheroo thing was just a bit, I don't know. The story kind of build up a bit more for me, so to have that kind of go back, that was a bit sad. I just, I don't know. But I'm really looking forward to see what's going on, what's gonna happen between Theron and Mira, what's gonna happen with winter now that they've been freed are oh, so many cool cool things are gonna happen the fact that springs king's probably still alive because the power of the conduit has just been released it hasn't actually been destroyed so there's a lot of questions that need to be answered and so i'm really looking forward to the continuation of that that's it for today you guys i hope you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe and i'll talk to you guys very soon bye bye